Hello everyone, welcome back to Assetto Corsa Competizione for the latest round of Low Fuel Motorsports Coach Dave GT3 Sprint at Zolder. Now you're going to have to look a long way back through the grid to find me today. I had no luck in qualifying at all, aborting lap after lap due to slow traffic or cars spinning in front of me. And as a result, I've qualified down in 23rd out of 25 with a 130 0.7. Now that's about one second slower than I'm capable of, which was really frustrating. I should have been around 12th on the grid, but instead I'm right at the back with it all to do. Now if you saw my video from Alton Park last week, you'll know that it didn't go well at all. I thought things could only get better, but unfortunately they're actually going to get worse. A lot worse. The length of the video is a giveaway. This one is going to get real ugly real quick. And it's going to start straight away in front of me at T1 with a coming together between two BMWs there. That was Oleg Titov on the inside who just got squeezed onto the grass by Lieutenant Tree. There were cars all over the place. There were cars on the grass to the left. There were cars in the gravel to the right. I think we've picked up several positions there, so that's really encouraging. And as we approach turn four, we're going to tuck in behind this Audi of Florian Waterman. Get on the gas to start the charge. Down the long straight, and there's a McLaren coming right back across the track up with it completely wiped out. Oh no, we absolutely hammered that barrier on the left. I don't think I'm going to be able to continue here. Yeah, the car's undrivable. We've got the hamburger flag. We're going to have to pull over and go back to the pits. It's so, so frustrating. This was my one opportunity to do a race in any sim this week. I chose ACC and unfortunately it's been ended within four corners. Let's go back and see what happens, starting with turn one. And you can see the orange BMW there of Oleg Titov, one of several cars to get pushed down to the grass. He was squeezed right off that inside line by Lieutenant Tree and the other BMW. And at this point, I thought I'd avoided the worst of it. We got through T1 unscathed. However, a lot worse was to come. I was so unsighted coming through Turn 4. I didn't see the McLaren until the last possible second. By then, it was far too late to do anything about it, and we careered into the barrier. And look at the carnage it caused back there. Several cars in Involved. However, we came off by far the worst from that. Let's take another look from the chopper camp. Now, look, Tenetry is making a move up the inside of that orange McLaren. Is there contact? Well, there is, but it looked like the McLaren lost it and slid across the nose of Tenetry there, and that's what causes the havoc. Now, the luckiest driver in all of this was Anthony Sanfilippo in the Honda. We're going to ride on board with him now. He was a few positions behind when this all kicked off, but watch how he managed to avoid it by going flat out onto the grass and charging through. Unbelievable luck for Sanfilippo there. But speaking of luck, I've got none of it at the moment. One final view of the incident. It's Alan Cotton, the McLaren driver. Yeah, he just slides into the centre of the track. Tenetry's got nowhere to go. There's always going to be contact. And then all hell breaks loose. And unfortunately, my car was so badly damaged, I couldn't even drive it back to the pits. I had to get a tow. And of course, that meant a long wait until we could get back on track. More than three minutes. So my race is effectively done. What a kick in the teeth that is. Well, when I did finally get back out on track, I found myself in 22nd position. So we're not dead last. A few other cars involved in that incident also had to get repairs. They decided to call it a day and quit. But I wanted to finish this race. It's my only chance of a race this week. So I at least want to see it to its conclusion. But it's so, so frustrating when you're out there driving around two or three laps behind everyone else. Particularly when you see drivers spinning out and crashing like we did with Christian Glock just there. And what was even more frustrating was seeing just how much quicker I was than a lot of the other drivers on track. Take Ryan Zhang, for example. He's racing in 13th position, and I'm so much quicker than him. However, I didn't feel like it was the right thing to do to try and unlap myself. I'm not fighting for positions, so I didn't want to affect his race. So I did just hang back. However, look at my lap times. I've managed to get into the 129s so much quicker than qualified. And we're going to lose Zhang in front, and he almost takes us out. We have to go on to the grass to avoid more contact that was close yeah we got really lucky there to avoid yet more damage however Zhang certainly wasn't so lucky that hit into the tire wall is going to send him into the pits for repairs and that's actually going to give us a position because although Zhang was a lap ahead his repairs are going to take long enough to give us 21st and the 21st position was where we stayed. There were no other big accidents, no other repairs needed. So unfortunately, a lonely race ended with us finishing in 21st. We did just get caught by Alan Brown to lap us at the end there. We're going to let him by, even though we're only a couple of quarters from home. 
But much like last week in the Seto Corsa Competizione, I'm just glad to get to the finish line here and call it a day. Not a race to remember. I just can't seem to catch a break in ACC at the moment, and it's really frustrating. But I've always said it, sim racing does have a habit of kicking you while you're down. So here are the classified results then. There we are down in 21st. Shang in 22nd after that crash late on. But look at the fastest lap times. A 129.9, nearly one second quicker than I managed in qualifying. And if only I'd have put a time like that in during qualifying, I would have started from 10th, 11th, maybe 12th on the grid. I would have avoided all the carnage and we would have probably had a decent race. As it was, this one was awful. I can't complain though, we love sim racing for its realism and you have to take the rough with the smooth. Real racing drivers only get one shot a week to race and many of them will have it ruined in less than a minute. Today, it was my turn.